we are live. <laughs> We're excited to be back live with Quajo from Elementary Chinese. Um, who, if you, if you didn't see our previous live stream, Quajo is an awesome resource for the lang <laughs> Mandarin language learners out there. Um, oh my goodness, I always keep my little. Oh, you got that tab on there. Um, but <laughs> would it be a real live stream for me unless I kept my sound on? Um, so Quajo, would you be able to introduce yourself to everyone that may be seeing you for the first time? Wow, well, now the sun's out. Hi, guys and girls. My name is Quajo. I'm the creator of Elementary Chinese, where I help Mandarin learners who are struggling to improve their Chinese by showing them, showing you how to clearly choose and easily achieve your goals over and over and over again so you can build up momentum and confidence in yourself and your Chinese. Awesome. Thank you. It's so good to be here live again with you. And we are back to answer everyone's Chinese slash Mandarin questions. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's super exciting. Um, I've actually taken some exciting steps in my own oh. Mandarin learning in the last um, week. I actually, uh, well, I don't know if you saw my video about um, how I've been studying Chinese at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. So that's now out on my channel. And it's basically how I've been using Chinese TV shows to practice Mandarin. Um, but one thing, one area that I can't really improve by watching Chinese TV shows is speaking. And I've just been super lazy in the past few oh, months to <laughs> like, practice my speaking um, and get out, really put, put myself out there. And um, like when I chat with my Chinese friends in China, it's on WeChat, on WeChat. So it's all typing. So right. um, yeah, I actually found a really authentic, amazing tea house um, not too oh. far from where I live. And okay. so I've spent the last two days just camped out there for like hours and hours at a time. I got like, Quajo, I got drunk off tea yesterday, not yesterday, the day before. And tea Have you, you, had you were at the tea house or you at another place? <laughs> No, like, like, a t I don't know if you've ever experienced a tea high or a tea drug. It's like when you completely overbuzz yourself on okay. caffeine. It, it would right. be the equivalent of if you had like, I don't know, ten coffees, and you're just like, oh my god, oh, where, the, where is everything? What kind um, of tea was this? Well, all different types. We can't. Okay. He he knows his tea. This guy. It was so awesome. He took me on a magical adventure tour through. We started with white tea, went into green tea, into oolong, into puar, ended with um, you know, um, pre, uh, yen cha and um, black tea. It was just like the best. It was wow. so good. Okay. Um, right. But yeah, by the end, I'd probably ha consumed like two massive jugs of tea. That's a lot. Um, they have a bathroom on their facilities, I hope, right? Oh, yes. Okay, cool. They they do provide. <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry, enough about me. Moral of the story is I've been practicing my Chinese um, speaking and I've made right. a new friend. So that's right. really exciting. Tell no, me about your perfect. life and what's happening in Mexico these days. Um, a lot of the virus is happening for you guys who are like, where are you? I'm stuck in Mexico because of, you know, that's rampaging yeah. around the world. And uh, I mean, it could be it could be worse quarantine, I must say. Yeah. But um, life is good. Life is good on yeah. Instagram. Life is good on Yay. elementary Chinese on YouTube. Helping lots Yay. of people learn. Awesome. And everyone, if you're not already following Quajo, make sure that you do that on YouTube and on Instagram. Thank Just you. type in on the search bars, elementary Chinese, and it'll pop up. Um, yeah. <laughs> I know that you've recently launched a new Chinese resource for Chinese learners, the DIY Chinese community. How is that going? Have you had lots of signups? How is that going? Can you um, give us some? Well, yeah, there are. We So <laughs> look at me all nervous. So um, the DIY Chinese community really is there to serve you, the do-it-yourself learner who's like maybe overwhelmed, yeah. trying to piece together all the resources online, or maybe you just haven't been able to make the progress you really wanted to make, or you're yeah. frustrated, or you're thinking about giving up, et cetera, et cetera, but you want to go to a place where you can like consistently improve your Chinese and build your momentum and get that confidence to keep you going. And so um, it's just like an online community with coaching from me and a accountability structure because yeah. like, you know, um, people that are motivated going in one direction really end up sharing lots of resources and going quicker, farther, faster. Um, so it's going quite well. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, that's so good to hear. And um, you have a couple of lifetime memberships still um, that you're offering, right? Still do. Uh, the offering ends today, actually, at midnight okay. my time, Mexico time. Um, and we started out with 30 lifetime members and we have 13, 15, 14 left. So, yeah, it's going to be a good start. I've just put the link in the um, the live chat. So if anyone is interested in checking that out, we'll mention it again throughout the live stream, but um, really cool resource. And uh, yeah, but let's- Let's help you guys right here, right here. Like yeah. I love coaching people how to learn. Like too many people have DM'd me on Instagram with questions and they, they're either paying money for courses or been studying on their own and no progress. And like, yeah. for me, I don't think we'll go into like super into my story, but Speaking Chinese is one of the most fulfilling things. And so I'm just here to help people. Oh, that's so learn nice. How to learn. Yeah, no, I I was really reflecting on like why I like um like speaking Chinese, why I like learning well, Chinese, why and also like an element of like why I like being in China. It's yeah. just you can I don't know if it's and probably not just me, but this natural high of being able to communicate in another language mm -hmm. with a different, completely different culture. And it's like you have, it's like you suddenly get to put on these glasses and suddenly you see this whole new world. And wow. I, it's so much fun. Can you relate? I can absolutely relate. Last, yesterday I was doing a live stream with um, Happy from the Asian Enthusiast. She is watching right now. Amy, you should meet her. But this girl knows oh. her culture. And we were just talking about connecting with Chinese people and through language and via culture. Um, yeah, I can definitely relate. It's, I can definitely relate. Awesome. Oh, cool. Well, um, I'll introduce you to her on Instagram. But so well, the point of this live stream, <laughs> we are here yeah. to answer <laughs> Chinese questions. Like we're going to hang out. How long are we hanging out for, Amy? About an hour, hour and a half. About an hour. Okay. So we already put up on Instagram, like uh, questions asking both of our followings what kind of Chinese questions they had. And so we're gonna answer some of those and you that are watching in the chat and live, thank you for being here, ask your questions. And I guess we ain't leaving until we help you. Like it's about to be fire. It's about to be fire. It's gonna be good. Yeah, we're just gonna be spewing value. We're just gonna be <laughs> value, value, value. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, so basically we're just going to switch between questions that have been pre-asked yep. that we've prepared, like, um, to answer, and the rest will come from you guys in the live chat. So, um, yeah, ask your questions. Um, all Super Chats will be answered. Uh, speaking of Super Chats, I've just super there's chat. a Super Chat yeah. coming in from, from Suki. Thank you so much um, for your Super Chat, and really nice to hear that. Um, Cool. Appreciating your Chinese background. Yeah. All right. That's cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for giving that to Amy. Amy's cool. I'm happy. I, I'm, I, I'm happy I subscribe to you. Oh, so I'm happy I subscribe <laughs> to you too. We need to meet up in China again. Too bad we're stuck outside. But okay, your questions. And you guys, just so you know, this is off the cuff. Uh, yeah. Amy did not tell me the questions that she compiled. I have my own, but she didn't tell me. That's okay. I'm, I've been coaching people how to learn Chinese for quite a while now. So. I don't think you'll have a, you'll have a trouble. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, should we start us off with the first one? I've actually yeah. prepared some pretty fancy little banners here. So this isn't just an Iban Banda live stream. Here we oh, have look at that. an on screen. Oh, you're a pro. <laughs> okay. So um, how long did it take to learn Chinese fluently? Well, for me, if I was to answer that question, I would say that I am nowhere near the level that I would like to be. And I don't know if it's when you, as you keep learning, your definition of fluent becomes so much more like intense. Um, yeah. I don't think I'm anywhere near fluent. But I, if, you're, if the question is, how long did it take me to be able to communicate and like chat with people on the street and have, yeah, have a good combo, I would say maybe four years, but I was learning four at a slow. Okay. Yes. Not to right. say that you can't do it faster. I've met people that in six months of an intensive language program, they are like 10 times better than what I was like four years into it. So it's uh, how how time I, you put into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how about you? Uh, I would say two years. No, uh, well, 
comfortable in day-to-day -day life yeah. to the point where I didn't feel like I was struggling all the time and maybe a little more than slightly enjoying myself. Mm. Year and a half, two years. One of those years was in university uh, yeah. in the USA where I'm from outside of China. Yeah. And then once I did like intensive language study, we're talking like 20 hours a week in a program in Beijing, yeah. about a semester of that. So year and a half, two years. Nice, cool. Yeah, if I could go back, I would do quite a lot differently. Um, the first two years that I learned it at university, I would almost count almost zero progress because you just learn so slowly and mm -hmm. it, like snail pace. Um, okay. Here's a question that I found actually super. I had to really like, I had found it really interesting thinking about this. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Like I, I, I already <laughs> said, so there's no tones in music. You don't have to worry I, about tones. I don't think there is like, oh. no. No. actually maybe there is. Maybe there is. I don't think there are. I don't think there are. The songs that the songs that I have tried to sing in the past, I, I haven't understood that there were tones. So yeah. I guess I just was singing flat um, all along. In fact, why don't we defer? Since we actually, we really do. Yes. Like, Happy of the Asian Enthusiast is here. She's like a specialist when it comes to, and her yes. whole thing is yeah. about singing. So we'll just wait and we'll see her question or her answer float up in the chat. Are there yeah. tones in Chinese songs? And let's keep talking, but Chinese people, they I sing these songs. How could you have tones? And yeah, no, I, I that's don't... super interesting. I've never thought of this, but yeah, so true. I don't think there are tones. And she has just um, message back. She said there are. there's only tones in, there's a word I don't know here. I'm gonna need your help. Um, what is this character, that first it's character? Hot. Oh, I hope I hope that's Han, which means to like to scream. Um, Han Mai. But what is that word? I don't know all the words, but the second one's Mai, like it means wheat, or it could be Mai from Mai Dang Lao, like McDonald's. Um. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, and this is a very good point from JK, JK, JK. And I guess it's all really contextual as well. Like if you're going to hear... Okay, you know, okay, okay. you understand what I'm saying if I was going, why me? Even though I'm not singing it in tones, you still know contextually that I'm <laughs> And I think, I think an important thing to remember here too is like for those of you that are actively practicing right now, you must get from individual tones to practicing tone pairs to practicing phrases as quickly as you can because yeah, the tones, they're a lot harder to string together when you're speaking a sentence correctly. So just get there as right now, like commit, spend lots of time, get there as soon as you can because yeah. then Chinese people will understand you. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. I look at you showing, showing the haters some love. <laughs> oh no, like, you know, I don't even think that's hate. That's just reality. I'm not a very good singer. And someone the other day was like, oh, would you ever consider just putting some clips on YouTube of you just singing? And I was like, oh my goodness, I would lose so many subscribers. <laughs> do it, do it. No, that could be, that could be fun. Amy, Amy, Amy Unplugged. Um, Amy Unplugged. Super chat. Hey, thanks for a super chat again. Doesn't go to me, goes to Amy. Wow, that's cool. You got people that show you the love. Oh, <laughs> Remember? Thank you guys. So lovely. Um, oh, so nice. Thank you so much for your super chat, BBB2. Um, and we actually, I'm just going to address some of the questions here in the sure. live stream. Got some people saying good morning. Some people saying, oh, so uh, it must be really late if you have me shui jiao, deba. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there are some haters here. There, there, there are some haters. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just going to ignore We shed a tear for the haters? Yeah, nah. It seems. <laughs> oh, that's a little Australian phrase. I'll teach you a bit of Australian. Oh. Um, we have a phrase called seebs, which seebs. Um, us Australians were a bit lazy. And seebs comes from the shortening CBF, which is can't be effed and so if it wasn't a shortening enough to 
shorten a phrase. We've like shortened a shortening. So when you say seebs, it's like can't be bothered. So that's a little mm-hmm. happy, little fun, little thing for you there. All right. Um, here's a new question. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, we'll do this question then. Oh, oh wait, did we did we f- finish answering the question? We, we didn't. How do Chinese people understand oh. the songs if they? If there's no tones in the song, I think that was the question. And it's, I mean, Chinese is a highly contextual language. Yeah. And like the song has a name and meaning. And uh, <laughs> you, <laughs> I don't want to disappoint you, but did you know that like Chinese tones actually end up changing? It's just when we say them wrong, we're not saying them wrong according to the Chinese pattern, but like they do shift a bit anyway. So, um, yeah, there's, there's like and, and the thing when, when you go to China, if you're learning tones at the moment, and this is something I was really confused by because mm-hmm. it seemed like such a mouthful for, to pronounce every tone completely mm-hmm. perfectly. And uh, but in China, locals they, they're not gonna be like, Ni ha, and, you know, they're, they're not gonna be doing every single tone like uh-uh. completely perfectly, it just blends together in this, like, um, tip third tone, the way I teach it all the time, is the bass voice. So if you saw a book, like every book that has the the V going up, uh, that's a bad V, I'm trying yeah. to make a V on camera, like that, right? <laughs> Don't take your voice and dip it and be like, Bleh. because nobody speaks that slow. And also the yeah. problem with doing a tone like that, guys, is uh, if you train yourself to understand that third tone is dropping and then rising, in regular speech, you don't know. How do you even know if you are listening or if you're hearing a dropping part of a third tone or the dropping fourth tone? Because fourth tone is dropping. And how do you know if you're hearing the rising part of a third tone versus a second tone, which is rising? So I tell everybody who listens and follows me over on Instagram and YouTube, third tone is bass voice. Just start your voice super low, like bah, super short. And Chinese people hear that as the third tone. That's really great advice. That's a hack. So instead of Beijing, yeah. you know, it's just Beijing. 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 Yep. Cool. Next question. Yeah, no, that's great. That's a nice shortcut. Um, that makes it easy. Because I think when, when I, I'm trying to remember back eight years ago when I first started learning about the third tone. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to kind of wrap your head around the how to put it all together and mm-hmm. actually at the beginning to be honest i did not pay the attention that i should be to my tones which is yeah. why my tones are so horrible and actually now that we're talking about tones there's a couple of other questions about tones okay. here um that i think maybe it would be nice to kind of okay bring them this up. Is a, literally literally not me i didn't ask this but this is literally me um, I, my teacher never emphasized the importance of tones when I started and then I found myself in China saying everything in fourth tone. Um, so do you have any tips, um, for people how to relearn tones if they didn't pay attention in class? Yeah, it's uh, study, start with tone pairs. If you already have some understanding with Chinese tones anyway, then go straight to tone pairs if you're part of like the well you're all here on youtube search tone pairs find videos that have tone pairs and start just practicing all the different combinations and uh yeah that's it that's that's how you learn your tones <laughs> you can also awesome. speak okay, cool. and, keep it simple tone pairs good done keep going amy tone pairs. i'm gonna google that afterwards i've never heard of that um concept but another way that you can oh, I should explain practice them. your tones is to check out um instagram um and youtube you're the tone master you have so I many see, great tips on i totally forgot like <laughs> i didn't even i forgot yes, okay no yeah the... you forgot that you are the tone master literally i'm supposed to self-plug at this point but um if you guys don't follow me on instagram Yet every day I put up several of these tone stories, or at least one, and so there'll be a word, and you'll listen to it, and you'll have to pick between two tone choices, and then on the answer, I share the answer. And um, actually, very humbly so, but I get probably one DM a day now just from somebody saying how much my tone stories help them on Instagram. So like, 
not in a self like I'm tooting my own horn or like in a self plugging <laughs> way, but really um, I've gotten so many of these messages that the tone stories help. Go to my Instagram at Elementary Chinese and start practicing quizzing yourself on the tones. Pay attention to my explanations. Those will. Oh, really? Thanks, Ashley. <laughs> those those yeah. will, those will help you. When okay, I first so started, um, when I did my first live with you, I had a friend that I I know, but I haven't. I'm not like always in constant contact with, mm -hmm. and he was like. Oh my goodness, you went live with Quajo. Like he has helped me so much with tones. I love his tone stories. I'm not even kidding. Um, and I had never told him about you. He was just like, oh my gosh, you went live with him, like flack. That's um <laughs> people are people are cool, like people are nice. Like I, I really want to help people learn Chinese. So um hang on, you guys. Like yeah. if you're if you haven't got your question answered or if you ask in chat, we are watching and it is our, I really do want to help you. So come with the questions. Like I'm a specialist when it comes to how to learn. I could explain grammar and words, but actually strategy is what I'm really good at. So like if you're watching right now and you're trying to learn Chinese, like seriously, ask questions and we're here to help you out. And we have a surprise yeah. coming up. I don't know when we're going to tell them, but maybe in like 15 minutes or so. So yeah. keep watching if you want that. What's the next question? Well, sh let's see if there's any in the chat. Um, okay. While you're looking in the chat, true yeah. story happened often, but um, so Didi, which is the Chinese Uber, well, um, yeah, it is in China. So frequently, as good as my Mandarin is, which I'm not fluent, but when I call the Didi and I have to tell them where I'm at to come pick me up, um, one time it's raining and I called the guy and I'm standing on the side of the road and I see what I think is a driver coming to get me and uh, the driver even kind of, I think the driver flashed their lights. I'm waving on the side of the street, car passes me. And I'm like, what's going on? Like I go up to the car and the car keeps going a little more forward because you know, black guy in the rain and he's looking for uh, his driver. And so I call him up and then I'm like, I'm trying to get in the car. And he's like, oh, where are you at? I'm like, I'm right behind you. I'm the foreigner standing on the street. And so I get in and he's like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. Like, I didn't know that you were a foreigner. Um, and literally that happens often, so. Wow, that, yeah. Back. Do you um, have the situation in China where you um, call up a restaurant and ask for a reservation or you call someone on the phone and then they meet you in person and they're like, wait, you're who I just talked to on the phone? Like, I thought you were Chinese. Yeah, you actually, um, a little bit of a, not conspiracy theory, but true story. I called to set up my internet when I first moved to Xiamen, which is where I first moved to China, uh, when I went there to live in 2009. And so I call up the, the um, what is it? Is it Zhongguo Dientong? No, why, how yeah, come I can't yeah, remember? Yeah. What's the internet yeah. company? I can't remember. At any rate, I call them up, tell them I need to set up my internet. They show up to my house. The technician looks at me and goes, oh, you're not Chinese. Um, he had to go back and bring back the foreigner paperwork. Apparently there's two sets of paperwork and they brought me the Chinese paperwork. And I don't know what that means, if we have special connections. Let's not go there. It's just, he had to go back and bring back proper paperwork because they thought I was Chinese. Ooh. Yeah. So what questions are we answering? Okay, so the next question is, um, this is a, a fun question that I thought was interesting. What's the best mistake you made in Chinese you learned the most from? Um, oh, 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 come on. What's, what's one? What's one? What's one? What's one? What's one? I, uh, well, one, a basic one that I'm, I, I don't know, maybe other people have problem with. I was saying mum in the wrong tone and I was what? accidentally calling people's mothers horses. Um, <laughs> that's, that's not good. Because mum is mama, right? Mama. <laughs> Mama. So first tone, Mama. light tone. Mama. Mama. Yeah. And then I was using the tone for horse um, whenever I would say mom. But you know what? I didn't really learn the most from that. Can I Can I get you to answer this question? I'm having a bit of a brain fart. <laughs> you guys that are watching, I told you she didn't show me these in advance. And I don't actually have a best mistake prepared. I can't think of what I'm trying to, but I can't. Oh, this is disappointing. Okay, wait, I'll um, let you think. Ooh, while I Rob with the twenty dollars super chat. Ooh, super chat, super chat. Thank you All so right. much, Rob. That's so lovely. 
Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, daddy daughter language classes. That's so fun. Okay, let's give them something good. Rob, if you and your daughter are studying in Chinese class, one of the biggest things that will take you further than everyone else in the class is your ability to choose goals outside of your books and curriculum and then go after those. And what I mean by choose a goal is, uh, I don't know if you've been to China or if you're going to get to China, but choose something that you want to communicate. First of all, make it a goal, like two weeks from now, like you want to be able to say whatever phrases and then get to someone who you can practice with online, say in the Tandem app, T-A-N-D-E-M. Oh, I love Tandem. I used that for a while. Lots of people are talking about it. Apparently there's like quite enthusiastic Chinese folks there. But um, Rob, what you're going to want to do is practice your phrase or ask them how to say whatever you need to say to achieve your goal and then start practicing with them and the final thing i will say rob is a super ninja trick is find an online resource that you are very interested in could be a tv show what have you and make sure that you and your daughter just watch that because if your interest is high your motivation will stay high even when class gets a little hard and um, most people when they start out in class they're not going after the super interesting things they're not trying to speak with real chinese people and uh, you will do well. That's super <laughs> awesome advice. Thank you so much for that. And thank you for your super chat, Rob. Um, <clears throat> so let's go to our next That's question. Cool. Oh, have you thought about um, the best? No. Okay, I'll, honestly, I have a very lame one, but it's not even a real, so uh, when I first went to China, and I was studying abroad, I was chosen to give like the, uh, not MC, was I MC? No, I was like the opening remark for this like, this little competition. If you guys have been in China, the different little like majors inside of like the Chinese major folks in a university and the English majors, like maybe they'll have a little competition. So we were in an auditorium and I kept having to practice my lines and I had to say this competition is um, hosted by the whatever department. And so it was blah, 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 right? Um, and instead of saying Juban, which is what I should have said for hosting uh, or put on or promoted by, I said uh, Juban. And people laughed at me because just the different tone change to Juban means a motherboard, like the thing inside of your computer that controls all the logic instead of Juban. Um, that's actually a pretty lame mistake. Let's move to the next question. <laughs> I want to make sure I'm yeah, helping. I, as I was giving my one, I, I just was like, this is so silly, um, my answer. Okay, so actually there's an interesting question that's just been asked in the chat that I wanted to okay. address. Um, okay. I had the problem when I first went to China that I couldn't understand anything that was being said because it was so fast mm -hmm. and I was having this problem in my mind where I was trying to translate everything at the same time, like into English, and it was difficult to understand anything. Um, because it's not like in the textbook CD where, you know, everyone is speaking nice and slowly and perfect, um, it, it, you know, so my advice would just be to be patient with it. And I, you know, the first month of me being there, everything was a little bit real, like really confusing. But by the end of the year, yeah. or even within like half a year, I was starting to sort through that and just by, time and listening I started yeah it just started to work itself out out in my head do you have any better quicker solutions for people um I used to ride mountain bikes and my friend who was way better than me could do various tricks and I was like how do you do it and he's like Quajo, it's just time in saddle so Montevides <laughs> Listen to more Chinese yeah. if you want to understand Chinese natives. But here's how you can save yourself time and improve more quickly. It's the idea called comprehensible input. Uh, I got my degree in linguistics. Uh, I teach ESL. I used to teach ESL. English is a second language for a living. You want to find input that is more comprehensible to you, which means it's at your level so you can understand what they're saying and work your way up to faster, rapid, speech and so watching programs tv shows on an app that gives you the pinyin would be oh, a good way for you to associate what you can read in pinyin with what your ear is hearing 
And then what you're doing is also um, activating more of your learning senses, like reading plus listening. And slowly but surely, you will begin to get better and more quicker, more quicker at differentiating the Chinese sounds. And that is not a super fast overnight process, but it is how you can begin yep. to understand Chinese natives. Also, you can just talk to Chinese natives. Take a shortcut, find some Chinese people where yeah. you live, start talking to them. Well, it sounds like we are in agreement. Time is really the only way to remedy that problem. Um, Zoe, thank you so much for your super chat. Um, this is great. This is right up your alley, uh, Kwejo, when it comes to like strategies and motivation. Um, so how do you stay oh. motivated? currently stuck in the US and can't go back to China yet. Zoe, I feel like I really empathize with your situation because I'm in the same thing. I'm in Australia, I can't go back to China. Um, but I found it's um, knowing that I'm going to be back in China and that I want to improve for the time that I am back in China, that's been my motivation. So I found myself trying to study Hello. more. And, um, oh, is that a Mexican? It, it is right there. Oh. Hello, oh. Beto. <laughs> Eso es mi vecino, Beto. This is my neighbor. Beto, oh, he's so a, cool. He's a oh, yeah, wow. I'm so stuck here, if you guys didn't see in the beginning, stuck outside of China so um, because of the virus. And so, Zoe, here's, here's wow, here, here's my advice. If you're struggling with motivation, number one, remember, like, look in deep and remember why you needed to learn Chinese. Like, if you can magnify that why that's in your heart, um, I know this is more like mindset, but it's so true. If you can keep your goal clear in your mind, the why that's motivated you in your heart to begin, that will help you increase your motivation. Um, going to more concrete ways to increase your motivation. What do you watch that's interesting? What do you do with Chinese that's interesting? Um, I'm learning Spanish actively right now. and. Some days are good days, some days are bad days in life, but because I really enjoy watching tech YouTube channels, I watch those in Spanish. And even when I don't feel like studying Chinese, those are interesting to me. So align what you're consuming with your interests and uh, Zoe, make a plan. And everybody take this advice. This is super good advice if you do it. Make a plan because frequently we wanna give up when we don't feel that we're making progress. And so if we don't feel we're making progress, then we lose motivation. But if you have a very clear plan to take you from point A to point F, and that plan is easy to follow each day, then because you know we're humans and we see the progress, then our motivation is a little higher. So put those three things together, a good plan, interest, and magnifying the why that's in your heart. And uh, your motivation, you should see that coming up again, Zoe. Awesome. That's such a great answer and helpful to uh, like everyone. I'm, I was taking mental notes that I will write down like, <laughs> in my like, like literally this is why I am, I'm fortunate. Like it's my community. I created it, but I'm yeah. fortunate to be in there because I'm working with, well, not working, but helping people every week. I see what they say in the, in the Facebook group. I'm live with like weekly Zoom video calls. Like the stuff I'm saying works, guys. Like it really people does. I'm loving it. Look at this message from Claudia. Tone stories are the best. Thank you. Thank you. Like <laughs> Time saver. So everyone, if you're wanting to improve your tones, make sure you check out elementary Chinese mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. tone stories. That's that's me and my toad stories over there. You should have had yeah. a batter that said at elementary Chinese. Next question. Come on. Um, okay. Let's start, okay. Let's, Next let's, let's bring some more value. Or should I look at one off of my phone? That, uh, yeah, sure. Um, answer one that you got. Um, I, I've I, I wrote them all down. So all right. let's which one you want to answer and I'll put the fancy banner up on. This the, one I actually, sorry, did not put in to your note aren't shared note file yet but, but the look question, at the question, banner right the now is, you read it and i'll look at that it's on the camera how do you practice your listening at home how do you practice your listening at home is the question and for those of you especially who live outside of china you practice your listening at home by finding an interesting show to learn um and listen to it or 
or you find like a Chinese podcast and practice listening to it. Or if you have a book or you're thinking about what book to buy, make sure you buy a book that has audio. That's actually perfect because if you say are picking a textbook with six levels and you're at level two, then get the audio for level two and then you're almost guaranteed that you can understand what they are saying. And I know that you're probably gonna ask me what TV show to watch. So uh, there is a TV show called Huma Lao Ba. It's called Huma Lao Ba, and it's um, like Tiger Mom and Old Dad, whatever. You can find it. Can you type in there, yep. Amy, into the chat? or what, What's or, it called? Huma? Huma Lao Ba. Huma Lao Ba. Should I try to share my screen? Huma Lao Ba. I, wait, I think I got the right characters. Um, Huma, Tiger. Mom, yeah, Huma Lama, look at that. So you guys copy that out of the chat right now because this won't be, the chat disappears after the live stream. Go there. And the reason I say go there is not because it's like Desperate Housewives or anything, not that I watch Desperate Housewives, but um, the TV show is about a couple and they have a daughter and they ha also have good jobs, but they basically sacrifice so much in order to move to a much smaller house near a school it's a really good school in Shanghai, I believe. And so there's all these day-to-day -day life kind of topics, but also like there's a bit of arguing, there's a bit of bittersweet laughter, all this, these dynamics between like the parents and the, the like the grandparents, the parents and the kid. And um, it's very much in tune with like uh, themes that affect Chinese people's lives. So you could start there with that TV show. Awesome. Oh, I think that's a really good tip. I cut out there for some period of time. So thank you for um, picking that up. You're um, welcome. Brian Wooster says Huma Malba. No, it's not Mal, it's Lao as in old. Interesting. Um, okay, let's go to the next question. Is there any more questions that you received that you'd like to answer while you've got your phone out? Or would you uh, like What inspired you, dear Nadia? Um, asked me what inspired me to start learning. And I think you should answer that too, Amy, but I think it's about time that we share our surprise before we answer what inspired us to start learning. I just made a fancy banner. Um, okay, <gasps> yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what happened? What happened is I was doing my little happy dance and then I hit my headphones and my computer jumped and I kid you not, it almost fell right off of that ledge. Like that would have been scary and bad. Anyway. Oh, yes. <laughs> okay, um, you take the reins on this, um, <laughs> this surprise sharing. Um, it's the, 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 su the surprise is this. It's only happening right now and I think it ends in what, less than two hours, but Blondie and China fam, first of all, thank you for trusting me, helping you learn Chinese. Like that's what I do. I help Mandarin learners, especially you if you're not inside of China to improve your Chinese. And not just that, but all the tips and tricks and tactics so that you can build your momentum, so that you can build your consistency, so that you can communicate with confidence. And I do have this thing called the DIY Chinese community. It is a monthly membership where you come together and get coaching from me, but more importantly, um, you have accountability partners with inside the group. And then I'm teaching you how to set goals, achieve goals time and time again, so that you're making the most progress ever. And just for you that are watching right now, Amy and I have decided if you want to go sign up for it, it will launch officially July 13th for somewhere between $29 and $37 a month. I'm not sure yet, but right now we're doing lifetime memberships. I started out with 30, there are about 15 or maybe 14 left. And if you come in as a lifetime member, it is $197. But what that means is that you don't have to pay every month and you get to enjoy the membership for the lifetime of the membership. And, and Amy and I are going to do a special session with you if you sign up today. And that means we will hang out with you and a couple others on a Zoom call. And it will be AMA, which means ask us anything you've ever wanted. We'll hang out for like an hour and a half. I will obviously, well, you'll be inside the membership, so you'll get my best tips there too. But 
anything you want to ask, like we're there to help and ask. And um, last time four people signed up before and uh, this time it'd be cool to see who's there. So again, if you're not in China and you're studying by yourself and you want progress, that's awesome. What no, it's such a good resource because that's like, there are so many resources out there to learn mm -hmm. Chinese, but mm -hmm. the biggest problem is staying on track with that. And having that accountability and having that those buddies around you being like come on like pick up your books and make sure you're doing your chinese today um so yeah i think it's a really really great resource and i've put the link i've been pasting the link in the live it's chat elementarychinese.com slash amy there's a b right by my yeah. head let me share a story this girl's name is autumn uh, she's from Canada. She says, I've always had a fascination and love for China. It wasn't much of a surprise when I started self-studying Mandarin in February of 2020. The first couple of months I made a lot of progress, but then after that I got kind of stuck, right? Um, I'm just reading. She sent me an email, so I'm reading from my email. Then I found the Elementary Chinese uh, Instagram page, found the videos entertaining, and I heard about the DIY Chinese community that I just told you guys about. And she actually, here's the thing, because I teach that you should not do everything at once, and that's actually the quickest way to failure. So um, if you're yeah. studying, speaking, and listening, and all these different resources, and you join the community, the first thing I will do is get you to cut all of that out and focus on one thing. And so it was like, she had her doubts, but she chose to trust me. And she was saying that after she picked a goal to focus on, she felt that she actually could attain what she wanted and she wasn't burning out anymore. And she actually made, because she was doing the little tiny steps in the right direction, she was making so much more progress than she had made before. Awesome. And you guys, you can do that. If you don't wanna come join me because you don't have it in your budget, just watch Amy's video over again. Literally take a pencil or a pen and write it down. Like this will help you make big progress. So let's keep going. Awesome. Um, I want to say a huge thank you to, for the super chat from LYX at 24. Um, so if I, I, on my Instagram, I've been <laughs> experimenting, <laughs> making some food that I've been missing. And about a week or two ago, I made Jajangmian because I was craving it like crazy and they turned out so delish um mm -hmm. they were super super good i've been using this fun little textbook um for chinese street food so i've got to cook something this weekend I've, the cravings have returned but now mm -hmm. restaurants are open for me so i can actually go and get my fix instead of having to literally provide it for myself Whoa. um but yes inspiration with the question it's yeah, desperation is a good motivator. Um, what? <laughs> oh, inspiration. I thought you said desperate. I did not say also desperation. Desperate. <laughs> um, what inspired you to start learning? Actually, uh, for me, in the beginning, there wasn't so much like inspiration or like vision. It was more just like Chinese would be good for my future in business. And I was planning on doing a business degree. So I started learning because I had like an interest in Chinese culture and history from like my school classes, I, I had an interest in that. And I was like, oh, you know what? I'm doing a business degree, may as well add on a Chinese major, minor. And um, so in the beginning, it wasn't, I didn't I, I know anything really about China outside of what I knew from my Chinese friends at school. And, you know, some of the basic kind of Chinese foods that you would get from the Chinese takeout, which I now realize aren't real Chinese food. But yeah, and then I went to Shanghai and went to China for my first time that I started actually feeling inspired to keep actually seriously pursuing the language. What about you? Uh, started with a girl. <laughs> oh. not, a oh. <laughs> not even a Chinese girl. Um, so I, w I used to work in Paris and I um, scored a date with a Parisian and she was traditionally Parisian pretty, as in she was a model. And the whole time, yeah. she looked like one, the whole time during our date, she was talking about this African guy. I forget the country, but I can't forget that she kept talking about him because he was married to a Chinese lady and he could speak Chinese. And this Parisian um, was fascinated enough to spend the whole date with me talking about him. 
So I guess maybe that meant she obviously wasn't that fascinated with me because, uh, but somehow in like my, <laughs> my, in my, in my 19 year old mind, I associated like, and I only got one date with her, like never a second date, which really was too bad. But um, I, I, I associated, I guess, Chinese with like pretty French model because that next week going back to my job, I bought a book from a bookstore and it was actually Chinese with the ASIMIL method, A-S-S-I-M-I-L. They have it in English, but it's much yeah. better in French. And I started watch or reading the book on the job. And right after I finished working in Paris, wow. I went back to university, uh, University of Washington, USA in the state of Washington, Northwest, right by Vancouver, Canada. And I enrolled in a Chinese class. And three weeks into that Chinese class, I went to a study abroad fair and signed up at the third booth. Crazy how the numbers line up like that. And the third booth was a program that took me to Zhongyang Mianzu Dashia. And uh, that is a financial day Beijing Dashia. Yeah, I lived in Wudaoko actually um, for one semester in an apartment. Uh, what did you, did you live in that really tall, nice pink complex? I forget the name of it. Or oh, were you no, I know what you're talking about. I had a friend that lived there. I actually lived on campus, but it was like essentially in Wudaoko. Huskies, looks like a husky is right here. Adam Brown, if you're a husky, oh. are you a husky? Husky power. Yeah, Wudalco. You live in Wudalco too. That is um Well, yeah. Well, uh, my university was like on the cusp of Wudalco. You, you go, go out outside. Pardon? Where'd you go again? Where'd you go again? To university? Uh, Where? Tsinghua. Whoa. You went to a legit university. Way better than uh Mun <laughs> No, no, no. I like this is the thing. People like when and I say that I went to Tsinghua, they're always like, oh my God, like, that's crazy. That's so impressive. But like, no, it's not, it's not super impressive for, for me in my circumstance, because I went there to study Chinese and uh, like Chinese universities are extremely welcoming to foreigners who want to come to their universities and study Chinese. Um, if I was wanting to go to Tsinghua and study economics or go to Tsinghua and do a master's uh -huh. or a doctorate, no yeah. chance, like, I didn't have to pass a test to go to Tsinghua. I was given a scholarship to go to Tsinghua. Like, so Even people, <laughs> like, it's not it's not a hard thing to do to get into Tsinghua if you want to study Chinese. Um, so, yeah, not so um, impressive, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, a lot of people commenting about Wudaoko. Seems Wudaoko. that a lot of people have studied there, um, yeah. and. Somebody went to um, Wudao okay. or something, something sure, yeah. Oh, cool. Is it important to learn Chengyu? <laughs> What's your opinion on Chengyu, Amy? <laughs> I hate Chengyu. It's too much room in my brain that could be filled with, with four, like, other useful characters. Like, Chengyu, the four-word idiom things that I always forget as soon as I learn them. So, for me, they're completely useless. Like, when I'm advanced and I'm really, like, flash with my Chinese, I'll be dropping Cheng Yu like this tomorrow. But for now, when I, there are basic words that I really should know, like picture frame or wall, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What's I'm gonna, your opinion? I'm going to identify with you and say, I do not like Cheng Yu, like, because they're difficult and you spend your time, God. some of these Cheng Yu are entrenched in like history or stories that many Chinese people understand but that we don't understand and you learn one but then uh, you're like waiting to use it and then the time never comes and then you do use it and it's wrong anyway so but but Cheng Yu are important to Chinese culture and here's the thing like yeah. I used to not learn them because you can never learn a single Cheng Yu and you can express yourself just fine if you speak good Chinese. It's just that if you know certain Cheng Yu, you will be able to save yourself many, many words by pulling out the right Cheng Yu for the right situation. And they're super yeah. important for Chinese for culture, sure. especially if you are really hanging out with Chinese people. Like I'll never forget, I worked at a factory that produced uh, touch screens for cell phones. And uh, oh. my new sales boss was motivating the team because it was hard times. And 
she, at the end of her, not speech, but at the end of something she was saying, she said the first two characters of a Changyu and the rest of the team finished the last two characters of that Changyu. And they all were on the same page. And it was like a, ah, we have closure. And I was so lost. So yeah, yeah, yeah. hard, but. I completely agree with what you're saying. When I get to a level where I know a lot more things, I'm going to be spending more time learning Chengyu. I wouldn't say that it's something that a beginner needs to learn or even an intermediate student. It's not like you need to know Chengyu to survive in China. Right. Um, but yeah, you'll definitely get a lot of street cred if you drop a Chengyu and sure. people like, be like, oh. I'm actually doing more Chengyu videos now because I kind of committed in myself. Don't hold me accountable to this, please. Those of you who are watching, but like on my channel, you will see more and more Chung Yu videos because part of the reason I didn't learn in the beginning was because I could not tell which Chung Yu were like actually useful for day-to-day -day life or more often than not. And it seemed that the Chung Yu that my books taught me were just stupid. And the ones that I tried to learn, I, I never could use. So I started asking my Chinese friends, what are Chung Yu from day-to-day -day life? And they started telling me. So I started making like oh. literally they're sitting on my hard drive now, videos to learn Chongyu. So uh, if that wasn't a reason to have go follow me <laughs> on elementary Chinese. Have you got those up on your platform or are they only on your hard drive? There's a couple. Um, okay. And there's going to be four more within the next two weeks. Absolutely promise Chongyu videos on the elementary Chinese on YouTube. In the description Excellent. below is where the link is. So Amy, yeah. next question. Next question. Um, sure. Okay, here's... Here's one. Um, what is the fastest way to memorize new vocab? For me, flashcards. Mm -hmm. What's your way? Um, I don't actively memorize new vocab at this moment, but what I do do is I have a note. I'm looking at my phone because the note is right here and it's called Zhong One Remember. And what I do is when I find uh, a new vocabulary thing, I put it in there. And I guess my one of my superpowers is I tend to repeat things often as in if I learn something, yeah. I'll use it in the same situation again. Uh, coming from my linguistics and teacher training in new vocabulary acquisition, friends, uh, seven to 23 times is the number of repeated exposures you need to a new vocabulary word in order to internalize or learn that new vocabulary. And this is based on linguistic research. The reason that I say seven to 23 is because depending on which linguist and which research paper you're reading um, or website, because lots of websites quote this too, but depending on who you're reading, they have a different number. So if you want to memorize new vocabulary words, yeah, Amy has a good technique. Flashcards are, are good and decent. Um, speaking of flashcards, what do you use for flashcards? You can write them down old school or you can use, what app do you use, Amy? I use, um, well, I, I write them down old school, but I yeah. got the, um, I have a lot of friends that use uh, Anki, the app Anki. And Anki the, yeah, um, I love it. I, th I think it's a free resource or maybe you have to pay to like get the more, um, get all of the features it's a -N -K -I. and basically it's um a, a flashcard tool and the cool thing about it is it has a lot of pre-made flashcards so for example if you're yeah. studying for the yeah. floor, there are flashcards decks flashcard decks already available in anki that you can just click on and you don't have to write a thing or you know basic chinese flashcards mm -hmm. click the deck mm -hmm. and you've got like the hundred most used characters in chinese exactly. um so that's a nice resource. I can't remember whether it's free or not. Um, but Anki is free. The decks, some are inside of Anki and some are yeah. outside on the internet because people can make their decks and oh, okay. release them. And you, oh my gosh, you just made me remember something that I'd help somebody with inside of the DIY Chinese thing, which mm. is learning characters. Like, please, I'm speaking to you guys who are watching because Amy already knows this, but please be very efficient with your time because you don't have infinite time. So there's two ways to be super efficient about learning Chinese characters. If you live inside of China, 
this way is unique to you, which is pay attention since we're creatures of habits, like we work at habit, we work at one place, right? And we usually take the same subway there or the same bus or the same bike route. So on the paths that you travel the most, look at the characters on the signs that you need the most often and learn those first, because then you'll be getting repetition by seeing those more often and you're more likely to internalize them. Also, the restaurants that you go to, you know, those five that you always love to go to, learn the characters on the menu of the things that you eat the most. Basically, what you see the most often will be reinforced the most often. You'll learn it the quickest. If you're not in China and you want an efficient way, find yourself a vocabulary, lit, um, what are they, like common frequency? People have yeah. taken the characters and organized them from first to, I don't know, 5,000 uh, of which characters appear mm -hmm. the most commonly. I can never say this in coherent English. The point is if you learn the first 100 characters that appear the most often, um, mm -hmm. somebody, I would say don't quote me, please quote me in the chat, but if you learn the first 100 characters that appear the most frequently in Chinese, then you know something like, 70 yeah. or 60 percent of the language that you'll see in day-to-day -day life something like that so there's an efficiency yeah. oh, no, that's really really good tips i particularly like the one about how if you're in china you just memorize the things that you're seeing every day um that's a really really good easy tip um and just a big shout out to sergio um for your super chat and he's recommended some books here um have you read these books before, Quajo. Um, I can't even the, say the that. The second one, I think, is the 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 um the famous Chinese book about the. Um, uh, I should know this, but I don't. Have you oh, read either of those? The the, the Sanguo Yin Yi. I never. I don't. I'm not. Okay. So. So so first of all, I don't know much about Chinese history, as in I am not well read. So if you ask me if I read Song Wukong, yeah, I looked a little bit of it, but I haven't read all of these books that are worth reading. Yeah. No, I haven't read any of like Confucius texts. Um, I do my reading primarily with my interest. Um, so yeah. Sergio, hats off to you. You're interested in this stuff and you obviously are <laughs> more intelligent and a bigger scholar than me because those those books are not light reading, um, but when I do read, it's with interest. So I read business books and um, yeah. Interesting. When when I read, it's Harry Potter. Harry Potter? I, that's In In well, for me right now, like I wouldn't say that my Chinese is super flash hot. So um, I still need to read books that I've read in English before. So yeah. I've read Harry Potter in Chinese. I've read Twilight in Chinese. Um, nice. yeah. Okay. It was fun. Like a couple of years ago, I was really down with the vampire lingo in Chinese. Right, um, she's your way because she's yeah. like the drinker of the suck, and she is like blood and quays the ghost. So yeah, she's I know. Way. <laughs> I love that vocab, and I love those words in Chinese that are just so like logical, like volcano mm -hmm. oh, is awesome. fire mountain. Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's 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 like demystify something here, or maybe. Yeah. Um, so reading in Chinese, you don't have to read things that you don't like, and you don't have to be able to read a book completely in Chinese. Like, believe it or not, uh, if I was in China, I could show you my bookshelf. There are some business books that I own completely in Chinese. Other ones, in order to learn, what I do is I buy the English version, and then I bought the Chinese version from Taobao, and then I would read say a chapter in Chinese, and then maybe a couple chapters in English, because I want to finish the book, right? Mm. And then maybe I would read another chapter in Chinese or two or three chapters in Chinese, but like you can ping pong back and forth between your native language and Chinese. There's no shame in reading a book that you have to read in your native language in order to understand more of the Chinese. Like that actually is scientifically like learning typically sound you like that word um so you can do that yeah i had a cool tip actually with reading that i used to when i was reading um harry potter i would read it on my kindle and i would download the chinese version onto my kindle and i would also download a chinese to english dictionary on my kindle so when i was reading and i didn't come i came across a word that i didn't recognize i would just highlight it and it's super handy it would just come up with 
the definition and even some examples of how to use it in a sentence. It was such a great learning tool that I really should go back to using because usually if you're reading a book and you come across a word you don't know, you have to look it up on Pleco, but uh -huh. you just tap it and it's there. So, um, yeah, I forgot I forgot about that. Um, here's another question. Uh, when to ditch textbooks? When is it time to say goodbye to those? Ooh, that is, oh, my gosh. Like, I on Tuesday was in a Zoom call um, with folks in DIY Chinese. And uh, first of all, shout out to Brian Nobles, who just signed up for the DIY Chinese community. Brian, if you're still welcome. watching, welcome aboard. Like, thank it's you for so trying <laughs> me, this random black guy on Amy's stream. Um, Brian, Amazing. I can't wait to see you inside of the community. You guys, like, I give it, I give you my all inside of the DIY Chinese community, like literally. So this conversation, when to ditch textbooks, I literally was having it on Tuesday night during a Zoom call. Um, there were five of us there. And I will say this, who asked it? Or this was not just on your Instagram? Um, this was on my Instagram, yeah. Okay, hear my heart, guys. I am the most fulfilled when I speak Chinese to communicate with Chinese people. If you're not using Chinese to communicate with Chinese people, you are missing out on something that's very, very just, it's rich, it's a rich experience. So I personally say, learn, it's on my YouTube channel, learn real Chinese, not the fake book stuff, communicate and have fun. Why do I say that? Because it's super fun to communicate. So you need a textbook to give yourself yeah. a foundation, but once you pass probably the intermediate level of your textbook, um, if you're thinking about HSK, then I'll say once you get to HSK four and a half, uh, it's time to ditch that textbook. Why? Because the law of diminishing returns kicks in, which just means that you're studying more, but it's less applicable to real yeah. life. Um, that's how the law of diminishing yeah. returns works. So I say ditch yeah. to intermediate upper and then heavily go towards talking with real Chinese people. Use my one of my favorite phrases, which is um, because we have our weird oh, okay. that we learn in, 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 uh, in, in Chinese, right? Or we piece together our phrases, but really learning Chinese is about forgetting all of the things we learned, finding how Chinese people communicate in various situations, yeah copying their phrases in the same situation to communicate what you need. Do that as quickly as you can. Definitely once you get to intermediate plus, get rid of the textbooks, go heavily into Chinese music, um, like Happy from the Asian Enthusiast, go like meet Chinese friends like Amy at the tea shop, talk to Chinese people and you will never regret that. Yeah, that's such good advice. Um, and I, I can speak from experience. When I was in Tsinghua doing the intensive language program, as valuable as that was, in the textbooks that we were learning from, it, it, we were no longer learning the words really essential for life. You know, we're not learning words for eat, uh, uh -huh. drink, uh, uh, sit down. It's We were learning words like, I remember there was one lesson where we had to memorize the vocabulary for the word to poke ducks with a stick there's like a specific word for herding ducks around a farm with a stick and i can't remember for the life of me what it was but i was like what? surely surely in my life i'm never gonna have to use this word um and i'm taking time out of my day to memorize it so i found that a little bit frustrating oh um, for sure absolutely i hate it <laughs> Yeah, um, but yeah, really good advice. A super chat from James here. Um, I This is a, a big question to answer. Me personally, I have been, I'm outside of China right now. Actually, this is, sorry, this is for a beginner outside China. Mm -hmm. um, what are your what are your tips on this? Is there any good resources for speaking specifically as a beginner outside of China? Yeah, but here's the problem. If you're a beginner, you're not actually going to have very useful conversations, you know, because you're a beginner. And books, I, I love books in the beginning. You know, and then it's like, you know, and then it's like, 
or the mama or the jiji or it is stupid stuff that you never ever say in china <laughs> right so <laughs> when you ever like say ni da yo ji ko ren like when is that ever like something that you just Oh, um, but I have really good advice for you, James. Though, thanks for the super chat to give that you gave to Amy. And um, my advice is what I personally did when I was a beginner, which is I read along with the audio that came with my book. So, James, if you don't have book audio with your book, go get a book with audio. Find a really cheap one because your book is at your beginner level. Therefore, the audio that comes with it is at your level. And as a beginner, you really need to understand how to make tones. And sounds in a way that Chinese people can understand you, and a good way to do that is to read along. James did it, but that's perfect. Do it more because as you read more phrases, don't just read the vocabulary list, James. But as you read more phrases, you are literally training one your eyes as they read the pinyin to associate the correct sounds that you're hearing with the audio, and you're training yourself to. Learn the rhythms and the. I was just thinking that song. Rhythm is a dance. Then it's old school. Um, and you're training your brain to follow the rhythm and the intonation. Actually, is the word I was looking for of a Chinese phrase or a sentence. And that is a very good thing to do if you're a beginner. Um, you can never start too early reading along with yeah. audio as a beginner. That's awesome advice. I'm really bad at giving advice to beginners because it's been so long since I was a beginner. It's literally been eight years, and I don't know what the textbook, the cool textbooks are these days. The textbooks I was using are like ancient history by now. <laughs> um, so thank you so much for um, for that awesome insight. It's、um, okay. Oh wait, you got a this. Oh, Amy, 不说话的样子，加上这侧光，看起来真漂亮。Who said this? This this this, this, is your, this is your. It was up at four fifty three p.m.、Uh, Juke <laughs> Ming Kim dropping dropping the very the very the very Roma <laughs> Roma is kind of like cheesy in Chinese. It is beautiful though. Like、oh. that one that deserves a highlight. Like that 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 deserves. Yeah. Amy, 不说话的样子，加上。I think I think the the Tse Guang would be like that that angle from the side, and you're not looking,、oh. and maybe you're like blinking your eyes, oh, and listening. The, the, well, the, I heard that. The, yeah, that's hilarious. I um I actually heard that in that um my my Chinese friends they pay a lot of attention to how they take self. And how they position the camera. So right now, it's probably not an ideal angle. I should be doing it at forty-five degrees up, looking to the side. And just closing my mouth. In fact, this is the perfect time. Hold that pose, Amy. And then that. If you guys are watching right now, <laughs> literally take a screenshot, put it in your Instagram <laughs> stories, and tag Amy and me, and then we will totally give you a shout out. Amy, let's pose. Let's like point together. Like, Wait, I'm, I'm gonna like point together at the. You got that morning hair. Wait. Like point towards the middle or something. I don't know. How, what's what's that? What's that? <laughs> take it down. <laughs> okay, we're done. We're done. Let's quit being silly. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good. That's a good look. Maybe that's a good look. Okay.、Um, oh, thank you. I woke up like this, but literally, it's literally. You can, as you can tell, you can't tell, but I woke up like this. I definitely put a good amount. I was so excited last live stream to see that photo of you with dreadlocks. It was legendary. <laughs> if you guys missed out, if you weren't here on our last live stream、oh, to see massive dreads. <laughs> Um, it's. I'm not going to show it now.、Um, go watch it. Here's okay. Can I answer this question? This is a question for intermediate learners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go for、um, it. Because this definitely is also one that I heard on a Zoom call、uh, earlier this week. But、uh, where is it? The guy wrote it, and I totally can't focus my eyes on it.、Uh, oh, right here. So I'll try to put it. He said, "Share with us ways to improve your Chinese after reaching." This intermediate high level, right there. Well, I actually have a very similar couple of questions that I got, like、okay. having to do with how to move from intermediate to advanced, how to get over that intermediate plateau.、Um, cool. So yeah, I would love to hear your strategies on this because I think I'm I need that advice because I'm in that intermediate stage.、Okay. I want to get more advanced. So, 
All right, here's the advice. Here we I go. listen to you, Sensei. Here we go, folks. So to get from intermediate to advanced, okay. uh, I'm going to talk about two things. One is watching Chinese programming that you're actually interested in. I know I said this before, but it really applies because the problem with a book when you get to the advanced books is they tend to focus on advanced grammar. Why? Because books are written by PhD people. And in order to get published, they have to make the knowledge all like straight up and down and clear. And so advanced grammar. And the problem with advanced grammar is you don't need advanced grammar to really communicate mm. in most, you know, in lots of day-to-day -day life. So as somebody going from intermediate to advanced, you consume more media. Uh, you mm. can consume songs that you like because popular songs, look for like top 20 charts, go to Baidu and type in Inyue is how you say music. Maybe Amy, you could type that word in so people could see it, but listen to songs, also get QQ yeah, music. And as you learn popular songs, number one, it gives you another way of communicating. Number two, if you say a couple phrases or couplets or whatever you call them from a song, it builds that connection with a real Chinese person, which brings me to the next point, the reason why you want to watch lots of TV shows is because they are communicating in a way that is more advanced than intermediate level. And so literally you're exposing yourself more to phrases and ways of communicating. And I will even say systems of communicating. Just like, you know, like Amy, me and you, since we speak English natively, we actually tend to say more or less the same sort of things day in and day out, yeah. and we put certain words together in certain ways, and they might not be the right grammatically correct ways, but it definitely is how somebody in Australia communicates, yeah. and um, or how somebody in the US communicates. And so you really need to watch, if you're an intermediate learner, you really need to go heavy into TV shows. And yeah, I I think that, that's what I'm like focusing on at the moment, but l there are some gaps in it at the, because obviously like you can watch TV shows and you can learn the vocab and you can learn the call you, but you're not getting that speaking practice. So I would say get into TV shows and complement that with regular spoken Chinese practice. So yeah. I've started going to a tea house and um, I'm excited to keep that up. And I'm going to start doing a Chinese corner in Sydney where mm -hmm. people who are studying Chinese um, can come together. I'm thinking of doing it in maybe a week or two. So, um, I'm really excited about that and just having a good opportunity to chat and exchange learning skill, um, learning us, um, strategies and just making some new friends. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's that's really a good way. It's um, you just gotta speak, 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 speak. But also interest, interest, yeah. interest. Like I like business, so I yeah. look at business books. Literally, if I didn't want to bore you, I would show you my YouTube, and you would see that because I like tech. I watch Spanish YouTube channels for like tech yeah. reviews and stuff. And because I like business, mm -hmm. I, there's plenty of Mexican, because I'm in Mexico, YouTube channels, like by Mexican creators for business. And I also watch, <laughs> um, I do watch a little bit of Pepper Pig, but um, oh. yeah, so it, what, what, what's- Pepper Pig is fun. It's fun, <laughs> it's okay. But yeah, whatever interests you is what you need to really start watching more of in Chinese. Yeah. You, you, um, you have such a cool, you have such a cool following, Amy. You're People in your comments are super nice most, for the most part. They're pretty cool. Yeah. I like being here. Yeah, Tan here is one of my longtime subscribers. He's been subscribed to me for literally since the beginning. So thank you so much for your super chat um, and for your support. I really, really appreciate it. Um, I had a question here. Find um, it. Let's talk. Oh, this would be a good one. What are your favorite websites and YouTube channels to learn Chinese? I actually came across a really fun one, a YouTube channel. Um, the other day, I actually got a, a DM from someone on Instagram being like, like hey, I have this, chi um, this YouTube channel that um, evaluates and rates different China YouTubers Chinese. So basically, she picks apart like, um, so say you've got a, who's a really big 
like Xiaoma NYC, the guy in mm -hmm. New York who mm -hmm. um, speaks Chinese really, really well. She'll make a video about him and how he pronounces things and how he speaks and gives tips of like how to do it better. And mm -hmm. she wanted to do one on me. So I'm really excited for that to come out and oh, to see oh. exactly what I'm doing. Um, but yeah, I, I've forgotten her name. I'll, I'll look it up um, while you tell us your favorite. You um, look it up and favorite. I will I will take control of this, my screen and literally share my Perfect. entire screen and I will Amazing. show people exactly what to do. So hopefully you guys can see my screen. Chinese 101 is a YouTube channel for those of you that like to learn 40 Chinese phrases or 1500 words. Um, yeah, that's going to be your YouTube channel for lists. Here's a smaller one. Um, it's called Karen. I just say Karen Chinese. This would be for an intermediate speaker or above. Amy, are we still here? Yeah, yeah, we are here. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, cool. I'm here. Yeah. The reason I like her is uh, if you're slightly more than a beginner, she tells stories. <laughs> And her stories are interesting. And she gives you the kind of language that is, it's not vulgar, it's not like swear words, but it's at that level between what you learn in a book and what like is inappropriate for real life, but is more how people speak. Uh, the only way I can explain it in a way that you would get is you don't say, I need to use the lavatory, you know? You, you just say like, I have to go pee or I have to take the kids to the pool or I have to, you know, like she uses that kind of language. So I like her channel. Um, now that you guys can see, because you're watching my screen. So who ma lao ba, right? Type that in and you will get a playlist of right up here Yeah. called Tiger Mom. Ooh. That's that TV show oh. I recommended. Another decent TV show is called Naked Wedding. Now we're getting saucy. Bohun Shudai. So what naked wedding actually means in Chinese, like a luohun is a wedding. A naked wedding is a wedding where the guy doesn't have any clothes on. Um, where the guy doesn't have a car or a job or a house, because those things are very important for a man when he gets married. A naked wedding. Uh-huh. Yep. And this TV show is about a young couple in just that situation, and they have a baby, um, and they're in Beijing. So if you guys like the Beijing Hua, then you will enjoy this. Again, because it has a lot to do with regular life themes. Um, Luo Hun Shidai is pretty cool. And uh, another YouTube channel that's good for learning Chinese. Why don't we leave it there and keep it, keep it pretty simple? Um, I'm gonna, yeah. oh. Um, oh, I was websites. looking madly in my DMs and I couldn't find what I was looking for. Go but I have a, um, someone who actually wrote in and told me the name of it. It's called Xiaolu. Pardon? Oh, I was going to say yoku.com, which is on my screen now. That's like Chinese, kind of like Chinese. It's yeah. YouTube, but plenty of Chinese TV shows are there. Um, also, I T E A I Q I Y I dot, I believe it's com, is another place to find plenty of Chinese. <sighs> TV shows, of course, if you unshare your screen and get down to the to the link in the description, elementarychinese.com slash Amy, because I forgot to say this, but if you're watching live, I'm giving away lots of perks, including like a free strategy session with me. But these disappear in 40 minutes from now if you're watching live. So um, like literally. Oh, and wow. I, I do it one-on-one one strategy it's, session? Strategy session, as in I help you plan out your near goal and long-term goal and help you clarify things, because this is what I do professionally. Um, and then yeah. also I'm offering lifetime access to the Fix Your Chinese Tones course, because like I got sick of all the resources Whoa. that are online, so I made my own Tones course resource. And I have a guide, and this yeah. guide is like, it's called Teach Me Chinese. It's literally 11 years of my experience living in China and being a teacher. And it's basically the guide that you give to any language exchange partner to turn them into a super teacher. So it's like me teaching them. It's in Chinese and English, half in English for you. And then the second half is Chinese for them to teach them teaching strategies how to always come to the session prepared with exercises based on what you told them you want to learn. And so anyway, that's just my own little plug. Let's do another value question. No, awesome. Um, 
Okay. Well, let's make this one of the last ones that we answer from our list uh -huh. and then we'll go to the live chat and answer yeah. some questions. Um, okay. So let's see. Oh, uh, oh. Um, oh, I don't know if you could help us with this question. Oh, great. I hate, hate grammar. <laughs> Okay. okay, let's go to, a, let's go to another one because I also answer, hate grammar. Answer, there, if, I, if I don't answer that, people are going to oh, give okay. me a lot of crap and be like, this guy can't speak Chinese, so hi. Um, so there are three does in Chinese. One of the does is not in this question, but first of all, Chinese people, instead of differentiating mainly in chat when they're writing, um, they just put the first de, which is called, I believe it's called a baishal de, and they just use that de all the time instead of even looking at these two, these does. And if you're Chinese and you're in the chat right now, please give me a thumbs up if I'm explaining it correctly. Um, yeah, there you go, the Baisha does there. So the second the, the second the, oh geez, I can't even remember this grammar point. Oh, I'm failing, it's so bad right now. The, so the no, second no, 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 like is, this is so complex. It's okay, it's okay, I can do it. The second da is an adverb, da. So what comes before that is a verb, and then a adjective, I believe, would come after that da, thus making an adverb. So a very simple thing is, he speaks quickly, ta shuo da han kuai. This da would be that, that first da that you see on the screen that has like the, the sun radical above it, and then the, um, that looks like, is that a show on it? Or, anyway, so if you want to say you're doing something in an adverbally way, then the thing that you're doing, the verb, comes before that da, and then the adjective or adverb comes after the da. So if I'm running quickly, pao da han kuai, or pao da kuai, um, and chi da man, or chi da han man, or chi da bi jiao man, like this is that. The next, uh oh, wait a second, did I mess it up? Oh, guys, help me out. I think I just messed it up. Alakan Atka says correct. I, I feel all of a sudden like I messed it up. Uh, complete trans... You know what? Forget this. Complete transparency, that last duh, I can't actually remember technically what it is anymore. <laughs> I, believe it's like I thought it was something to do with like when you put the L-Y on the end of something, like um, quickly or... Uh, happy the um, Asian enthusiast says ching ching da. Is it Tom Rhodes says I'm right, don't worry. Oh, okay, yeah. The other da is the L Y. So ching ching da shou hua is like to uh, okay. uh, speak lightly or chow chow da shou. Oh, okay, cool. So if you put the, it's like an adverb mm -hmm. again, but if you put how you're doing the thing and then the verb after that da, then it's like an L Y. So if your Korean friend who said that you were Jen Pyalyang was here and he wanted to like chow chow to talk in your ear, um, then that would be chow chow, like whisper, and then that duh, and then the verb after it. Um, <laughs> you like my examples? I love it, yeah. Zayf, put, put them up. Zayfiren Mikael, put adjective plus duh plus verb. That's just what I said. So, um, perfect. There you go. Those are differences between I think that this helped because um, I always get confused with that. And also with the, uh, we don't have to answer this one, um, but the someone also answered, help me with the le and the guo and in which situations you use oh, them in. Oh, oh, no. So the guo I'm, is actually simpler. Oh, it has to do with okay. have. Like if when you're using the, is it the perfect tense? Or in English when you say, I have gone, I have eaten. Um, that's where you can have the guo and you put it right after a verb. So like, you know, like, like, uh, is like, I have had that, right? In the past, mm -hmm. I have done it. Um, the le, many people want to say that is like a past tense marker, as in you can put it after a verb that has occurred in the past and that is indeed true, but is also, I refer to it as a completion marker, as in something that has finished that is not continuing anymore. You could put the yeah. love after it. Boom! Oh, look at you. That And that was said really nicely. Um, that Yeah, that was really good. Thank you for I have, that. I have, I, I have a certification to teach Chinese. I haven't taught Chinese like in an actual school. 
recently. So like it's a little rusty, all these vocab grammar rules, but um We've got another <laughs> one and it's a super chat, so here we go. <laughs> Give me the screen. Give me the screen right now, super chat grammar. Why don't you answer that? So your super chat, Amy, you answer the oh. question. <laughs> Am I sharing okay. my screen now? No, no, hold, here, here, hold on. Hold on. This will save everybody. I'm literally showing you the Oops. best grammar thing ever. Do not um, go and buy a grammar book. But go here. Chinese Grammar Wiki. It is made by Wiki. John okay. Pasden, who is like legit OG white dude that learned Chinese. All the grammar points are here on this website. Not only are all the grammar points here, but they are very clear in examples, like super clear with many examples um, in a very logical order. Awesome. Every grammar that you could ever need is 100% guaranteed here, explained in an ultra simple way. So Chinese grammar wiki, 100% free, go there and boom. So now we don't have to answer the super chat. <laughs> No, um, so I guess, Alessandro, you can um, go check out that uh, grammar wiki. Um, I'm not even going to attempt, like, for my, I guess her is like and, and then uh -huh. and then R is kind of like as well as, uh, like arts here. Oh, or, arts here. Or, yeah. If I see R, I usually like to be like, oh, well, this person is doing it like this, but um, R will not, like, I'm doing it in a different way. So I guess if you're contrasting the second part of a sentence with uh, the first part, you could use yeah. R by itself. Um, R -tia is kind of like more over in English. Like if you want to say two qualities, like this food is scrumptious and it's very healthy, then you would be like, bing, bing, bing. <laughs> there's a week. <laughs> That's well explained. Um, yeah, there's a reason I'm not a Chinese tutor. <laughs> I, I don't tutor Chinese. Um, I, I don't like it. Yeah. I like to coach how to learn Chinese. How to learn Chinese. Yeah, that's 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 actually almost more important um, because oh, if you can like follow the right steps to get there, you get there. Um, yep. In faster, and your Chinese will be better at the end of the day. Um, yeah. So it seems that our um, our live chat is not only a place. To learn Chinese but also German it seems that people are really <laughs> trying out their German skills here in the live chat okay. um so yeah Blondie in Germany great resource for the German <laughs> um Blondie in Germany or well, I have made a few videos in Germany oh really no joke okay. um right. yeah yo this guy is silly well, yeah, I, am I have silly. A, a boyfriend in Germany. that's right what's his name Hans yeah this yeah any you're not sharing his name. His name know. is Jack. Oh, Hans, yeah. Oh, People know. know him as Han. <laughs> oh, really? His name is Han. <laughs> yeah, no, his name is Dark. It's actually a made-up name. Um, oh. his mum made up his well, not made up. It, you see, it pronounced uh, written D I R K, um, oh. but his is spelt D E R K, which is a bit different. Um, so Sorry. yeah, um, that's his name. Hey, you guys. Hi. Elizabeth Hall is inside of the DIY Chinese community. Like me and her were just talking yeah, so good to last see. night in the Zoom call. And I think oh. I actually walked, no, was that Elizabeth? No, wait a second. I think I walked Elizabeth. Elizabeth, did I walk you through something? Was I was I teaching you how to do like goal setting and whatnot? I think I was. I can't remember. Elizabeth, I'm so tired. But she's like, <laughs> She might be one of the smartest people inside of the group. Um, <laughs> I keep Amazing. wanting to say she's a project how are you manager. finding the group? Like, oh, how fun. No, no, sorry, she doesn't. Oh, oh um, no, she's just someone else. <laughs> now I feel bad because I can't remember what she does. But <laughs> Looks like you're going to have to give some one-on-one -on -one time to Elizabeth this week. <laughs> Elizabeth, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I totally remember that I feel like she's really smart. Wait, actually, actually, there is one lady who is true story, um, a bit smarter in a different way than Elizabeth. But uh, <laughs> the first time we, I was sharing jobs, this is completely pointless. But I was sharing jobs, and um, 
she's a cool lady from Alaska. I won't say her name, but we were like, so what do you guys all do? And she's like, oh, I'm an OBGYN. And I'm like, oh, that is right. That's cool. And uh, then I was like, oh, so you're like, you're delivering babies. She's like, not quite. And I think she used the word... Yeah, I don't think you have a young audience. She used the word vagina architect. And I was like, what? And then because I'm a little immature guy, I was like, but yeah, she's like a plastic surgeon, you know, for down there. Anyway, anyway, moving right along. See, you, you, it's like when you hear it. This stream has taken such a fun <laughs> vagina architect. Like, I literally was trying to be professional and on the Zoom call, but like, it, I was, I just started like kind of laugh crying because it's like, like <laughs> And she's like ultra cool. Of course, you have to be cool. Like, um, but I just I like people. I, I like I want you guys to learn Chinese. Please, like if you don't come inside the um, yeah. DIY Chinese community with me, like just hear my heart. Scrub back when Amy puts this up. Yeah. Literally take a pencil. And if you can learn how to goal set, like literally take your goal that's really vague. Like I want to be fluent. Good Lord, don't say that. Like, make it very specific. Understand why you want to learn in your heart, but then also literally make a goal for like two weeks out from now. And don't just say, I want to read four chapters, but be like, I want to learn this specific thing. Then literally get clear on what you're going to learn. Also, who you're going to prove it to. Because if you set a real goal that's specific, then it's something that you can prove to either, I don't know, if you got a friend who was with you while you were studying abroad, because maybe you're like uh, Tom, this one guy who was working in China, but now is back in Zimbabwe with a tobacco company and his Chinese was slipping. And so he wanted a way to keep it up, reach out to the people who were studying with you and make your own little group together and build some accountability. But a very specific goal that you can prove to somebody, like don't say I want to you can make a specific goal like I want to learn how to order three drinks in Starbucks, okay, and prove it to somebody and then divide it up into doable steps. And that is something that you, if you do it over and over again, will help you make really good progress over and over again. Like Amy was so right when she just said like learning how to learn is actually more important than learning Chinese because there's plenty of people who pay for university classes or study abroad courses and they go but then because they don't really know how to study on their own once that class disappears their skills start to slip but if you know how to study on your own you can study anywhere you are in the world and make progress right yeah you're preaching to the fire like oh no did oh. I'm glad it didn't fall off. If it um, fell off. But, yeah, fell I've been off, learning but... Chinese for eight years now. I, I think if I had been approaching it in the right way, I would have been, I would be a lot better by now than I am. Um, so, yeah, I would completely agree with that statement. And I think that's a nice um, place to end our live stream today. Um, we've answered some really um good questions and I feel like um, you've provided some great answers. I hope my answers were also helpful. Of course they um, were. But yeah, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, is there anything you'd like to plug before we leave? Everyone, make sure you're following Elementary Chinese on YouTube and on Instagram. Is there anything you'd like to say before we go or well, there's um, any last minute questions you want to answer? Claudia tagged us oh. on Instagram. Oh, amazing. Zappala. Oh, wait, let's pause it here. And ah, why can't I? She tagged us on Instagram right there. That was kind of cool. And she said, they nailed it. Thank you, Claudia. Oh, is that <laughs> um, the one thing I, the oh final, my gosh, I love it. The final thing I wanted to say was just what I left you guys with. Sorry, my shoe came in tight and I don't want to trip, um, which is learn how to study. Know yourself, know what you're interested in, and spend a lot of time with Chinese kind of stuff that you're interested in. Like literally all the self-discipline and goal setting things that you could do to get consistent, go out the window. If you just find something that you're interested in, because if your interest is high, you could spend hours and learning and um, you'll remember it because you have high interest. Yeah. Oh, I guess we can't go because somebody just gave you a super chat, Amy. So Michael Ludwig. Um, but yeah, the, the final plug from me is that, of course, I'm going to say that my DIY Chinese community is awesome. And you're probably like this guy, of course he's gonna plug it, but listen, I did create it. And I think I've just been fortunate to be inside of it, seeing people make yeah. this 
progress and actually like be so happy that like I remember there's this girl Tanya lady Tanya she is in Texas but she's yeah. from Puerto Rico and she was studying she still is studying so many different things and so she came in and was like all over the place right and maybe you can relate like you got this show that you're trying to study and you got this book that you're trying to study but really you're not making any progress and so she after following like my tips like when she engaged in the group but she found an accountability partner with carly who is from new york and uh, really wants to go to china and hopefully we'll get to china actually and they became great accountability partners within the group and they were motivating each other to stay consistent tanya got rid of all the things she was doing well brought more structure to what she was doing. And um, if I could find the screenshot, she left like a really sweet message about how much progress she has made and how excited she is for her Chinese. And that's all I have to say is, if you want to be a lifetime member and get like some of these perks, I think you have like 15 minutes now before they disappear, come on in and I'll help you get Chinese so you can make progress consistently because it's such a good feeling. And um, if not, watch some free videos and just do what the videos say. <laughs> awesome. That's that's really, really useful. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. And I'm looking forward to our next live. Um, I'm really enjoying this um, live series that we've been doing. It provides a lot of value to myself, so I can only assume it helps other people as well. And I love seeing all the comments and the live chats here. Um, it, it feels like it's a little nice little community. Um, and I, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to our next one. So, uh, uh, and also one more thing is that I will be going live again in two hours time Ooh. with the Let's Talk China crew. Whoa. So if, um, there are people watching that just keep watching lives with me in it. Um, you can watch that at uh, in like two hours time. And the topic for that one will be religion in China, um, which I'm excited to talk about because I've um, seen a lot of things in China with my own eyes that I want to discuss. And um, yeah, uh, I'll see everyone there if you would like to join for that. But yes, thank you so much, uh, Kuejo, for joining me today. And uh, see welcome. everyone next time. Thank you all for joining. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for having Bye. me, Amy. It's great being here with you. Bye. Thanks for coming. <laughs>